this session is going to be recorded and going to be available in a few days in our YouTube channel. Today we have our, as our main speaker, Agustinho Linare from Anatel from Brazil, who is going to be talking about uh, a spectrum for 5G uh, in the case of Brazil. And Agustinho Linare holds a PhD uh, and is manager of spectrum orbit and broadcasting at the Brazilian Telecommunication Regulatory Agency, Anatel and is coordinating of the Brazilian Communication Commission for Radio Communication Sector, CBC2. He is responsible for the Brazilian preparation for the World Radio Communication Conference 2023, WRC 23, and he was head of the Brazilian delegation in the WRC 15 and WRC 19, as by chairs of the Radio Communications Assembly 2019, RA19. He's also vice chairman of PCC2, CTEL for the period 2018 to 2022. Thank you, uh, Agustinho, for being here today. I'm proceeding in your, in your presentation and just uh, for methodological purposes, once Agustinho Finish his presentation. I'll be asking a question and then going to give you uh, the chance and the uh, to be asking question for all the analysts that want to pose any question to him. Please use the chat uh, <clears throat> so we can read it uh, to everybody. With that said, go ahead, Agustinho. Thank you very much, Jose Otero. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, good day for everyone. It's a great pleasure to share the Brazilians' experience with Spectrum for 5G uh, with you. So, uh, in this talk, uh, we will present uh, the strategic planning and structural plan of Natel, uh, present our review regarding balanced technical and economic approaches, uh, Spectrum bands auctioned here in Brazil, uh, 5G auction outcomes, and uh, we will present the main takeaways. Okay, so uh, here on Atel, we have our strategic plan. So every work we run, we have to seek to accomplish with this strategic plan that have four main goals. Uh, these goals are promote the expansion of, of access and the use of services, with adequate quality and prices, foster competition and this industry sustainability, promoting consumer satisfaction and promote the, the dissemination of data and information of the telecommunication sector. Here, and here in Atel, we have our structural plan for telecommunications network called PERT. So we know our current situations, we know the challenges that we have in Brazil, and we we'll know where we want to reach in the future. So for example, 82% uh, of the municipalities that represent more than 93% uh, of the population uh, is served with optical fiber. So we have a big challenge to reach some cities uh, in the north and northeast uh, regions, once half of the cities do not have fiber. Um, we have also uh, many municipalities that have just uh, one company, uh, municipalities that um, uh, do not have uh, broadband. Um, and uh, with this, we have the objective to um, uh, uh, improve our connectivity in Brazil to reach places that do not have any G. We are talking about 4G, 5G here, but many places, many people in Brazil do not have any access to mobile communications or any broadband connectivity. Uh, and uh, with the 5G auction, we succeed to have a balanced approach uh, regarding technical and economical aspects. So uh, in Anatel, I deal with the technical aspects. We have uh, very good professionals that are uh, economists that are specialized in um, auction rules 
and uh, we talked a lot, we discussed a lot in order to propose the board once everything in hotel is approved by the board, everything that is related with uh, political and strategical matter uh, approved by the board. So uh, we could reach a consensus in the technical divisions to present a good proposal to the board. So uh, it's very clear for everyone that spectrum is a scarce resource. Uh, in many places, we have a lot of spectrum available but because you don't have uh, uh, the, the necessity, the requirements to have all the, the carriers uh, 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 operating because uh, in series, if let's say less than 30,000 people, maybe one operator is enough with some of the bands uh, being in operation, not all bands are necessary in such places. So uh, other aspect that it's very important to consider that is uh, treat uh, spectrum as a commodity is a simplified version of spectrum management. So uh, the three gigahertz has one characteristic so, uh, below one gigahertz has another characteristics. And even uh, when we consider the, the um, uh, different um, blocks in 3.5 gigahertz, one or other blocks may be more interesting because for example, we have blocks that are allocated for mobile, except mobile, uh, I don't know to mobile. There are other blocks that uh, are allocated for a mobile in the general sense. Um, some blocks may be a, a more pro probability to have, uh, let's say, difference due to intermodulation products. So everything has to be considered when we zoom and analyze specific spectrum bands and specific blocks inside these spectrum bank, uh, bands. All concepts of economic regulations are applicable to spectrum management. So for us, it's very important to have uh, efficient allocation, that is to um, uh, have adequate bands and bandwidth for different services, enhancing quality and competition. So we have to analyze, for example, uh, which is better for Brazil to keep uh, 3.6 gigahertz to 4.2 gigahertz for fixed satellite service only, or to refarm part of this band. And this was the solution in Brazil. We refarmed the, the 3.6 to 3.7 gigahertz because before we had uh, fixed satellite service only in this band, and now we have mobile service. And in 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz, we will have private networks sharing frequencies with fixed satellite um, service. And in this case, the private networks will operate on a secondary basis. Uh, we also have to take care that the spectrum blocks are distributed so that each unit is assigned for firms who values that most highly compared to all others. So uh, that's why we have auctions. Uh, those companies that um, expect that their investments will pay back more, they will propose higher values. And um, that's why uh, when, when we think the society in the end, uh, we believe that these companies will make more uh, efficient use of the spectrum. Uh, regarding productive efficiency, uh, it means uh, to use less resource, that is a spectrum, to produce better effects in the society. For example, if a company comes to an hotel and they ask for more spectrum, and we identify that they are still using um, a large amount of spectrum for GSM, for example, we would say, okay, you have to reform and use for LTE or any other technology that is more efficient than GSM. And it's very important to, uh, to take care of the dynamic efficiency that is uh, related with the regulation once regulation cannot difficult technological advances and innovations. In Brazil, uh, we have our uh, regulation and um, uh, we have our auction and the auction is related with spectrum bands. It's not, for example, uh, uh, linked with a uh, specific technology. When it is uh, has some kind of link, we say at least uh, 4G, at least 5G, but we will uh, uh, advance in the future for new technologies without any difficulties from the regulatory perspective. 
Uh, and the purpose of the auction is granting license to use red practices in the following bands. Um, we had here in Brazil for the so-called 5G spectrum, although some bands we expect to be used by 4G technologies, but we, we had the following bands. Uh, 10 plus 10 block in the 700 megahertz. That is a leftover of the 2014 uh, auction. Uh, we had 90 megahertz available in the 2.3 gigahertz bands. Uh, and we will have private networks from uh, uh, 2390 to 2400 uh, megahertz. And uh, it's very important to mention that for us, uh, this 10 megahertz block is not a uh, set aside block because uh, this 10 megahertz has uh, in the power characteristics uh, tend to be less power than the lower part of this spectrum. Once we have many uh, products related to Wi-Fi that is spread all over Brazil and uh, these bands uh, adjacent to the 2.5 gigahertz bands used by Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, um, we tried to have a, a coexistence between these private networks with uh, medium power and uh, Wi-Fi. In the 3.5 gigahertz, we have 400 megahertz available from 3.3 to 3.7 gigahertz. The 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz, as I mentioned before, will be used by private networks mainly for indoor usage uh, and it will be for low power equipments. And we will have a uh, IT system that will guarantee the protection of the earth stations operating in these shared bands. And in the 26 gigahertz, we have 3.2 gigahertz bands available in our auction. And we will use the 27.5 to 27.9 gigahertz for private networks. And we also uh, consider that this 400 megahertz is not a set aside because in WRC 19, the flex band that was identified for IMT was the 24.25 gigahertz to 27.5 gigahertz. So in fact, we are adding additionally uh, 400 megahertz for private networks. Um, here in Atel, as I said, we have a specific division that is responsible for all business plan and to analyze the markets. So when uh, the minimum or the, the reserve price is established, uh, this uh, specific division uh, analyzes all the investments that are necessary to deploy the networks, the expect the revenues, expenditure, taxes and depreciation, the, uh, the work, that is uh, uh, the, the, the price of the money. Uh, so it's a uh, weight to the average cost capital. Uh, and uh, they analyze the market as well too, because the, for example, the market in Brazil is completely different from the market of USA. Uh, the 3.8 gigahertz auction in US raised more than 80 billion dollars. So it's completely different than the markets. And the, uh, here in Brazil, we also consider a uh, hypothetical business plan of an efficient company. And it's an uh, entrant company, it's a new entrant that they try to model. So uh, with this, they consider the net present value for an entrant where they analyze the cash flow uh, for each year, considering uh, some inputs and uh, after uh, having this value, they, uh, uh, they have uh, here in Anatel, we also have a specific team that is uh, responsible for the universal services. So they uh, propose obligations uh, relate, for example, to coverage and the service or service areas, coverage on roads, uh, establish of uh, backbone to uh, cities that do not have uh, optical fiber reach in there. So uh, these obligations are uh, negative flush, uh, uh, negative uh, cash flow in this uh, business plan. So uh, when we have the net presence value, it has a specific price and we discount this price 
with obligations. So with this, we have a reserve price. That is the minimum price that uh, Idress Party has presented in the auction. So uh, during the auction, we will have a winner proposal in which we are considering the premium, the difference between the winner proposal and the reserve price. Of course, if the obligations will, uh, is more, uh, let's say, uh, we have, if we have less obligations, uh, the, the reserve price will be higher. So in Brazil, uh, more than 90% of the base spectrum pricing is associated with obligations. And um, this also reflects to this premium. Um, more than 90% of the premium was also converted to obligations. With this, uh, the money of the telecommunication sector is uh, staying in the telecommunication sector, reaching places that otherwise uh, the operators would not uh, reach there. So uh, we seek to improve connectivity and expand the coverage in Brazil. So uh, some basic obligations that uh, were considered uh, in 700 megahertz, for example, uh, obligations are related to federal roads and the localities without 4G. In 2.3 gigahertz, the obligations are related uh, to cover uh, municipalities and the localities without 4G. And in 3.5 gigahertz, uh, the obligations are related to optical fiber backbone to a list of municipalities, uh, 5G uh, deployment accordingly to a schedule, cleaning the 3.6 gigahertz bands, uh, taking care of the TVRO and protecting the C-band earth stations. We also have a program uh, related to Amazon that is uh, in English, is something like uh, Integrated and Sustainable Amazon Program, PIES. And uh, we also have a federal private network that is uh, associated with the 3.5 gigahertz. And in 26 gigahertz, the obligation is related with connect basic, basic education schools. Uh, I'm not a specialist, a specialist in obligations. We have a specific team in Atel that proposed these um, parameters, these compromises. Um, but in, in the, let's say, in a, a, a high level uh, discussion, these are the introduction of these obligations. And let's see the outcomes of the um, uh, 5G auction uh, that uh, took place here in Brasilia, uh, November 4th. So it is very recent uh, results. So in the 700 megahertz, we have a new company that is called uh, Winity. And uh, basically uh, this company has already presented their plan, plan uh, saying that there will be a neutral host so they will operate services for other operators. Um, and the winning bid was 1.4 uh, billion reais. So um, uh, $1 is approximately uh, 5 reais. So uh, we can have an approximation in dollars. Uh, and the obligations associated with these uh, flexibands uh, is 2.8 billion reais. And in the end, the, um, we had 806% uh, over reserve price. That is the winning bids proposed by the Winity. Uh, in 2.3 gigahertz, we have two blocks, one block of fif uh, 50 megahertz and the other block of 40 megahertz. And all blocks uh, were region based. So uh, we have here different colors representing uh, the, the companies that um, was the winner for these spectrum bands. Uh, I would like to stress that uh, in the Northeast of Brazil, we have a new company uh, that is called uh, Brizanet. Brizanet uh, already has a huge uh, operation in Northeast, but uh, it fixed broadband. Uh, now they will operate mobile networks as well. And uh, in this band, the win bid was uh, 1.5 uh, billion reais and the obligations uh, is 5.9 billion uh, reais. Uh, regarding the 40 megahertz uh, block, 
uh, we have uh, this uh, outcome of the auction. Uh, let's see the 3.5 gigahertz, and that is, let's say, the sweet spot of the 5G, the 3.5 gigahertz bands. And uh, we have three nationwide operations, each one with 100 megahertz. That is Claro, Vivo, and Team. Uh, each one will have uh, 100 megahertz nationwide. Uh, the uh, amount of winning bids was 1.35 billion reais, and obligations associated with this is 25.5 uh, billion reais. And uh, they paid a 12 percent uh, over the reserve price for these bands. In 3.5 gigahertz, we also had uh, regional uh, regional blocks, uh, and uh, in the end. We had uh, 80 megahertz auctions, and uh, we present here uh, the, the companies that won. Uh, we have a uh, Circuntel, that is a regional group that uh, was already operating in Brazil. Uh, Algar Telecom is the same situation. It's a regional company that is operating as a mobile uh, provider for a long time, and uh, we also have Brisanet. And other two companies, Consortium, 5G Sul, and Cloud 2U, that will have uh, 80 megahertz in the 3.5 gigahertz band. We had a 20 megahertz left over in this band. So uh, the win bids uh, of this block was on 1.9 billion reais, and the obligations associated with this, with this is 7.5 billion reais. In the uh, 26 gigahertz, once we also uh, included in the auction, the millimeter wave bands, we have this uh, outcome. Some bands uh, or some blocks were nationwide and others were regional. And Claro uh, won uh, 400 megahertz for 20 years period. And the, the Vivo 600 megahertz for 20 years and team uh, 200 megahertz for 10 years nationwide. Uh, the winning bid was 291 million and obligations associated with this is 2.6 billion. We also had uh, regional blocks. We have this uh, outcome, uh, NECO in Sao Paulo for 200 megahertz for 10 years. Team that won some nationwide blocks also one blocks um, for regional coverage. So uh, in some places they will have 600 megahertz. And Algar won the, um, the maximum spectrum level, that is one gigahertz. No company could uh, buy more than one, one gigahertz bands in the 26 gigahertz. So, um, Let's say, uh, uh, let's compare the to be pay, paid uh, values and uh, obligations. In the end, we have the winning bid 7.4 billion reais, uh, but uh, only 4.8 billion is to be paid because the part of the premium was converted to new obligations. So although we had winning bids that are uh, some percentage more than reserve price, more than 90% of that value was converted to new obligations. As I said, it is uh, money from the telecommunication sector uh, staying in the telecommunication sector. So um, let's present uh, these obligations in numbers. So all municipalities in Brazil uh, at least the main districts will have 5G uh, before 2030. Uh, 1,700 1, localities that are not main districts will uh, with 5G. Uh, 391 municipalities, uh, main district with at least 4G. And once again, all these localities and municipalities do not have 4G and of course do not have 5G for the time being. So, and are places that uh, the operators would not go there because uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, let's say, the, the cost to reach there is higher than the revenue to be there. So uh, that's why it is uh, obligations. 
uh, we have uh, 7,430 municipalities with at least 4G. Uh, 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 and well, I, I believe that we have some mistake here in this number. Uh, probably this is localities because here in Brazil we have 5,570 uh, municipalities. So here uh, is uh, localities. Uh, we also have 2,349 stretches of roads, some in uh, 30,784 kilometers that will be covered by 4G and uh, 530 municipalities, uh, main district with optical fiber backbone. That is, uh, municipalities that do not have optical fiber backbone reaching there, we will have um, backbone connectivity with optical fiber. And we also have 3.1 billion reais to connect the schools. So uh, the main takeaways of the um, uh, 5G auction and uh, the, all the discussions that were uh, the, the basic discussions that in the end, uh, we had this su uh, successful auction. Um, we consider that the spectrum auction rules offers uh, regulators an opportunity to extend coverage to reach less attractive areas. So if we had, let's say, uh, an auction uh, with the main purpose was to raise money to treasury, we could not extend coverage. And uh, I showed to all of you that uh, the connectivity coverage, the mobile experience here in Brazil will improve a lot after this uh, 5G auction. IMT may not be economically viable in less attractive areas. Uh, this is a reality. So to reach these areas with IMT, it's very important to have obligations and uh, these obligations in the end will represent less money to uh, the treasury. So each country has to uh, decide how uh, wish uh, the, the, the money from the telecommunication sector be invested for us. Of course, it's much better to keep it in the sector and uh, reflects in a better service for the population. Uh, it's very important in our review to balance technical and economic approach in spectrum auction. So um, we had simultaneous bands awards. So we had the 700, 2.3 gigahertz, the 3.5, the 26 gigahertz. And um, we, decide, we let the operators decide uh, the mix of bands that they will uh, deploy. Uh, and with this, we avoid uh, spectrum fragmentation, and we had the chance to have opt optimized lot size. Um, um, some countries, let's say, are making available 150 megahertz in these uh, very important bands, or 200 megahertz. And in the end, they have to uh, make lots of 10 megahertz and let the market decide uh, we will have 50 megahertz, the other will have 40, the other may have 80 megahertz. But uh, when we see uh, from the technical perspective, the user will not have the best experience in 5G with uh, less than 80 or 100 megahertz uh, block. And uh, we also have uh, difficulties with coordination because this band is TDD and it will be a challenge to have, let's say, uh, two or three operators, each one with different size blocks trying to coordinate to one uh, to avoid uh, interference in the other. So when we have uh, this optimized lot size, uh, it will be much easier to coordinate between operators. And uh, countries like Brazil has to consider different ways to guarantee connectivity. Uh, that's why in some cases we are more interested to reach the municipality and optical with optical fiber uh, and the operators in that locality can deploy different technologies and uh, offload that traffic in the backbone. And we here in Brazil, we also have, uh, at least in my view, a very good and updated regulation. And for the first time, we approved our spectrum plan uh, that shows the market what we expect to do from 2021 to 2028. And since 2018, we have a new spectrum management model uh, where high level spectrum and orbit policies, example, frequency allocation and IMT frequency arrangements are established, are approved by the board, 
but technical and operational parameters like power limits and coordination process are established by the high level technical staff of Anatel. So uh, with this, I'd like to thank you once again, uh, Jose, and uh, back to you to have our dialogue. Thank you. Thank you, Agustinio, for your presentation. Uh, some people are asking me if we are going to have access to the uh, PowerPoint after this event. Yes. Uh, and there is going to be a recording as well. I want to highlight two things that you mentioned because I think these are critical and very, very important. The first thing is, you mentioned at least twice or three times that this was very, very important that the money of the telecom sector that is invested in the telecom sector stays in the telecom sector. This sounds logical, but if we look into what has been happening in Latin America in the last decade, it is not often the case. The other thing that I want to mention is something that is also very important and it also sounds very logical. And if and it was if the main objective of the auction is to collect money, we wouldn't be able to extend telecom coverage. And that goes very well into uh, the paradoxes that we see in the region with uh, action mostly targeting a collective money while they have national connectivity plans where they have they want to have a universal service fund and are always talking about bridging that digital device. That said, my main question is what is next for Anatel? When is going to be that new auction? I know and you have mentioned in many places that you are looking to 2.1, 1.5, 4.9, and more importantly, what other millimeter waves frequencies is Anatel considering in an upcoming auction? Thank you, Jose, for the question. Well, uh, parallel to this work that end with the, this auction, for example, the, this 5G discussion here, Natal, we started in 2015 after uh, WRC 15. So uh, it's something that we are discussing for a long time. And um, we also started other projects some years ago, for example, uh, to make available the L band, the 1.5 gigahertz that was identified for MET in WRC 15. Uh, we have a regulation approved. Uh, we expect to approve this November the technical and operational parameters. So uh, probably in the next auction that the boards you still have to decide uh, when it will be. I, I don't know. It's up to the board to decide this. But uh, we have uh, the 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, we have additional 30 plus 10, uh, 30 plus 30 megahertz in the 2.1 to uh, slash 1.9 gigahertz. Um, and uh, we are also working toward to make available at least 100, mega, uh, 100 megahertz in the 4.9 gigahertz band. So uh, we expect that uh, in a future auction, this band will be made available as well, including other bands in millimeter waves, for example, in the 40 gigahertz that uh, we are discussing here in Anatel uh, as an outcome of WRC19. Uh, the, the, the main millimeter wave after WRC19 was the 26 gigahertz. It is clear for everyone, but uh, we will work to make available additional millimeter wave bands as well. And let the, uh, the board of Anatel decide when we will have the, another auction, including the leftovers of this auction, because we had some uh, important leftovers in the 26 gigahertz. Perfect. Now we are going to open the floor for the question from the different analysts that are participating here. 
And the first question comes from, hold on, let me, oh, we have plenty of questions. Uh, from Omar De Leon from Uruguay, and he says, uh, you have developed an excellent economic and technical structure for the standard to obtain your target with high efficiency. Based on a rather precise calculation of N MPV at present value, on this basis, what is the percentage success to ease to get each of your original objectives and especially for 5G? Well, uh, let's say uh, this Sorry. question would be better addressed by the division that run uh, this study, but uh, we have a, a, a federal accountability courts here in Atel, and all the calculation from Anatel has to be approved by this accountability court. So, um, of course, um, if we are considering an entrant company, uh, once we wish to give opportunity to new entrants, but um, they are competing with well-established companies that have already made investments. So the market and um, let's say the necessary investments for uh, those who are already in the market will be different from uh, new entrants. So all this business plan is uh, well applicable and Anatel uh, used the same uh, methodology for a long time. And this methodology uh, was also presented, uh, it's also presented in a report of uh, ITUT and uh, our colleagues from Anatel also uh, representing ITUT have some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, some uh, uh, class to other administrations that are wishing to understand how uh, to run a business plan for uh, mobile networks. So uh, Anatel has a long experience with business plan. And we believe that uh, this structure is uh, very uh, successful because uh, before 2010, Natal is implementing uh, the same methodology. Okay, thank you. The second question comes from Fernando Borjo from Mexico. And he says, how are you planning to guarantee compliance of the obligations? What are the consequences of the lack of compliance? And have you analyzed what might be the economic and social impact of the deployment of these obligations? Thank you, Fernando, for the question. Well, um, we have uh, enforcement division and um, they are responsible to check if uh, operators uh, accomplish the, if their obligations. In case they do not accomplish with that, um, the, in the auction rules, they need to guarantee, uh, 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 it's like an assurance price. In case that they do not comply with the obligation rules, Anatel can uh, execute this um, assurance, and uh, the, the operators will have to uh, will have an administrative uh, process against the operator in order to uh, to make them. Uh, in the end, accomplish of, with their obligations. And uh, Anatel has another uh, very interesting uh, procedure because since uh, I believe 2019 or 2020, we have uh, to do obligations. That is, uh, we have our uh, administ administrative process that in the end can uh, reach a uh, decision from the board, let's say a fine of 100 uh, million reais for something that they do not accomplish. Uh, but instead of pay Anatel this money, uh, you uh, uh, transform these money obligations to uh, to do obligations. So uh, let's say they have to make investments in some place that do not have any operation. So uh, Anatel has uh, also succeeds uh, with these uh, to-do obligations. So in the end, uh, we have also specific teams that are also responsible to run the enforcement to guarantee 
that operators uh, accomplish the, uh, the auction rules obligations. Thank you, Agustinio. Uh, the next question that I have comes from Argentina. Enrique Carrier says, why was there such a high over reserve price in 700 megahertz? Were there many bidders? Well, there, there were uh, some bidders, but um, let's say uh, we had in some uh, blocks a very, uh, let's say, overpriced bid. Uh, maybe one of the reasons uh, would be that as additional um, overprice uh, will, would be converted to obligations, they were already considering in their business plan that they would reach that places. So although we have, um, a, 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 let's say, a winning bids much higher, uh, the difference of the winning bids and reserve price, more than 90% is related with obligations. So uh, one possibility was that for this company, they, uh, we already considered that the potential of the 700 megahertz is so high because we will have operations, uh, for example, in roads and municipalities that do not have uh, 4G coverage that other companies will go to me, will come to me and uh, uh, make, let's say, buy in a wholesale uh, capacity and will sell for their uh, consumers and consumers. So uh, in the end, everything's related for the business plan that each company is considering and what they expect that they can have of uh, revenue and profits in each flexi band. Thank you. Uh, next question comes from Herman Fajardo Murier from Colombia. And he talks about uh, spectrum efficiency policies. He asks if you included in the auction any obligation for the winning operator to offer unused spectrum uh, in the secondary market after a predefined time slot. Um, well, in the draft uh, auction rules, we had uh, included um, a statement that after um, um, some years, I don't remember how many years, uh, the um, operators should uh, make available uh, their spectrum for uh, 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 spectrum trading or um, uh, um, uh, in the secondary market. But uh, in the end, it was decided not to include in the spectrum auction because uh, we already have a law that uh, established the possibility to have secondary markets and we are including the regulation in the updates of the spectrum usage uh, regulation in Brazil. So uh, yes, if the operator uh, do not use their spectrum, it will be possible to have a secondary usage uh, in the future. Uh, or even the operator will sell in the secondary markets or um, other, uh, let's say, a third party operator can ask to use a secondary basis in case they do not reach an agreement regarding prices, etc. Okay, perfect. Uh, remember, if you have any question, please write them in the chat so we can ask Agustinio. Uh, we have um, <clears throat> a comment from, sorry, but as I was reading, I, we got two people writing. I mean, okay, uh, Isomar de Leon again from Uruguay saying, giving thanks, Agustinio. My question was more oriented to what is the percentage success to get each of your orgi original objectives and especially for 5G schools connectivity. Okay, I understand that these uh, objectives is related with uh, obligations of uh, uh, auction rules or the strategic plan of Anatel. Well, in, in case it is with uh, the auction rules, 
we will need to check in the future how we succeed uh, with uh, schools connectivity, but uh, we have 3.1 billion reais, that is a, a lot of money to do this. And when we see previous auctions, for example, uh, Brazil has uh, 5,570 municipalities. Uh, all municipalities have at least 2G coverage, but um, once again, uh, they have coverage at least in their main uh, uh, districts. So uh, now we are uh, giving a Zoom in Brazil and try to reach places and the localities that do not have uh, connectivity. So uh, if we see previous obligations, uh, we succeed with, uh, the, um, with the, uh, the obligations of each uh, company because uh, we have, let's say, four top uh, operators in Brazil, Vivo, Claro, Team, Oi. Uh, it is expected that Oi will be split, split by these three others, um, Vivo, Claro, and Team. And um, we have, uh, uh, let's say, a good coverage, but for sure we can improve uh, the coverage in places that are uh, not very economic attractive. So uh, that's why we believe that uh, in terms of a percentage of success in the future, when we will look to what we did, uh, we will succeed because we will have the roads coverage, villages coverage, and we will give access to uh, uh, the, the population that are in underserved uh, areas. So uh, looking to the past, I can say you that Brazil's experience is very successful with uh, obligations in uh, auctions. Thank you. Uh, next question comes from Peru's Carlos Waman. Uh, is there any formal expectation about uh, what the impact of competition will be due to the interest of new players? Well, uh, as I mentioned, we have a specific company in Brazil, the, a specific division that is responsible for competition issues. And uh, we expect with a more competition that will reflect in better services and lower prices for uh, the end users. So that's why uh, in our uh, auction rules, we uh, had some uh, blocks that were uh, regional blocks because we know that some new entrants uh, would be more interested to operate where they are already uh, operating in a fixed broadband or even in a mobile uh, connectivity. So that's why we create regions um, in our auction rules that reflects uh, uh, where we had potential to have new players or we, where we had uh, our uh, operations of small and regional uh, players. Okay, next question come from Brazil, uh, Luciano Saboya. Um, Brazil has an extremely competitive telecom market, a unique case of the presence of more than 5,000 ISPs leading to the fixed pro, uh, leading the fixed broadband market share. How does Anatel see the telecom ecosystem to make the market competitive with these players in the future? I mean, in about the context of 5G. Well, uh, most of these ISPs, um, uh, the number is uh, much higher than uh, 5,000 in Brazil, but they uh, still have, for example, uh, or Wi-Fi connectivity or uh, even uh, optical fiber in small cities as well. But I think that uh, in this uh, 5G world, it will, it will be very important to have a, a mix of operations. So um, I don't know in the future, but um, I believe that most of the ISP that are still operating with Wi-Fi will, will need to review their uh, business plan for more, uh, let's say, uh, advanced technologies. 
although we also um, update our re regulation to have uh, TV white space, that is another opportunity. Uh, we will have uh, non GSO satellites operating that will guarantee uh, also good backbones uh, for such uh, ISPs. But uh, for 5G, you need to have a spectrum that uh, we have 3GPP bands. And uh, maybe uh, for those companies uh, or ISP that are interested to operate in this spectrum, um, Anatel maybe will make uh, spectrum available again. For example, in the past, uh, Br Brazil uh, made an auction for uh, based on municipalities in the TDD band of 2.5 gigahertz. So uh, we have many winners but just a few uh, could start the operation because the spectrum price was very low. Uh, so uh, many companies uh, participated, uh, paid the money, but they identified that to make investments in LTE networks, they would need to invest millions of reais. And by that time, uh, the 4G deployment costs were very high. Uh, maybe in the future, if this cost uh, decreases, uh, they could, let's say, advance from uh, a Wi-Fi solution to a LTE or other technology. But when we talk about uh, 5G, there, there will be a necessity to have a spectrum available for ISPs. But let's see what will be the decision of Anatel in the future. Perfect. Uh... Next question comes from Mexico, Jose Luis Peralta. Uh, as within the framework of the digital transformation that is happening at a global level, is Brazil implementing coordinated policies that complement the efforts to access broadband through spectrum auctions aimed at the daily use of digital technologies? Uh, let me read again the question. <laughs> <laughs> my pronunciation i guess so because it was a, a little bit uh long question but uh from jose luis peralta mm -hmm. yes um here in brazil uh, the public policy or the public telecommunications policy is established by the ministry of communications and uh, we have a specific decree uh, establishing uh, what are the telecommunications policy. And Anatel is responsible to make it happen. And uh, the way that, in our view, is more efficient to succeed to comply with the uh, uh, telecommunications uh, um, uh, policy in Brazil is through uh, auctions. Because we cannot reach an operator and just ask, OK, please go there, make uh, some billions of investments. Uh, the, the, uh, the companies are private companies. They are free to invest. And uh, the, form, the way that we have to assure that some places that do not have connectivity will have connectivity is through uh, obligations in auctions. So um, uh, we do believe that uh, this solution is uh, the uh, adequate way forward to um, uh, uh, make this digital transformation in Brazil. Of course, there are uh, some uh, structural uh, difficulties in Brazil because taxes are high. We have many municipalities uh, with uh, stringent uh, municipality law that makes uh, uh, very hard to deploy base stations. So uh, we have some structural uh, difficulties, but Anatel is working towards to explain uh, majors and uh, governors the necessity to make uh, simple regulations in order to operators to reach that places and uh, uh, to, to have this connectivity reaching the population because everything uh, we run, we do, we have to think what is the most uh, beneficial solution for the population. So this is our main uh, objective. And uh, I think that Anatel 
uh, is going the right direction. And uh, we have our uh, public policy establishing where we have to go. And Anatel has been very uh, successful in doing this. Thank you. Next question comes from Bolivia, Rene Bustillo. He says, Agustinio, just to confirm, you said that some areas, probably rural, will never be profitable enough for IMT 2020, 5G. What are the conditions for 5G operators to get universal access funding for 5G rollout? Are they any different from those for regular operators? Well, uh, we have to consider that when we establish obligations, um, it's in fact a money that instead of going to the treasury, uh, the government is saying that money will go to investments in places that do not have uh, economic attractiveness. So uh, we consider that such money, or uh, let's say public money, uh, unfortunately, our uh, law regarding universal uh, services is still linked with uh, public telephony. So uh, there are some discussions in uh, our legislative houses to update our law in order to use the universal uh, funds for broadband. But so far, uh, our law is still not uh, updated. But I do expect that in the future it will. Okay, next question comes from Ricardo Cermejo from Mexico. He says, what about deployment of 5G network? How wide um, has deployment advanced so far? It's the, the question from who? Ricardo Cermejo, Mexico. The one I before to, oh. to find it. <laughs> Would you repeat, Jose, please? What about deployment of 5G networks? How wide has deployment advanced? Well, uh, so far, our 5G is based on DSS solution. That, uh, at least my opinion, it's not, uh, let's say, what we expect for 5G, it's more uh, 4G plus solution. But it is a first step. So um, uh, we have some 5G DSS uh, deployments in Brazil, but we expect that in the middle of next year, we will have uh, the first 3.5 gigahertz deployment in capitals. So uh, in our um, uh, auction rules, uh, Anatel established how many business stations per population uh, for each year. So uh, uh, this is the timeline that we expect to have this 5G deployment. And this is the, the, the minimum because usually operators run faster than the obligations because um, uh, uh, when you have competition, for example, uh, in capitals, we will have at least Vivo Cloudy team. Uh, by the time the first company starts their deployment, the other one has to go behind because otherwise um, uh, users may move from one operator to the other. That's why the competition is so important. So it's uh, like uh, one company will feed back the other company in order for them to, to make all the necessary investments. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question from Omar. How do you foresee the impact of this policy about 5G and fiber optic connectivity on Brazil or main plan on IoT? Okay, uh, when we see uh, 5G, uh, we have the three um, uh, uh, main verticals, that is the enhanced mobile broadband, the ultra reliable uh, low latency uh, communications, and the massive, massive uh, machine type communication. So uh, IoT, uh, you can have, uh, let's say, uh, tactile uh, IoT that is more related with the URLC solution and IoT more related with massive machine type communications. And for sure, this is a, a great market that will come. Uh, in release 16 of the 3GPP, we will also have the industrial IoT 
that is another possibility for operators to um, uh, reach new markets because currently the operators clients are basically and the users but uh, in the near future in this 5g awards uh, they will also have other companies as operators because uh, you can have this uh, private network uh, using the uh, infrastructure of operators. So um, we have an uh, IoT plan in Brazil. Uh, we have some bands for uh, unlicensed use, but what will make all the difference uh, will be the IoT with uh, a continuous coverage for uh, smart cities and uh, smart companies, smart metering, so all of these will be uh, possible with 5G. Okay, thank you. I, I don't know if anyone else has any questions. Um, the, uh, yes, we just got one. And where is it? Yeah, it, this one is from Fernando Borjón. Have you analyzed what might be the economic and social impact of the deployment of the obligations? Thank you, Fernando. Uh, well, uh, as I mentioned, we have a competition team here in Atel that is responsible to run um, these studies regarding competition. Uh, in our uh, new um, spectrum usage regulation, we are uh, clarifying the all the, the dimensions of uh, spectrum uh, usage efficiency in which we have not only the technical aspects but uh, also economic aspects and also uh, the social impact so uh, for the time being we do not have let's say a final number regarding the, the social impact what will happen um, but uh, we have let's say the um, international um, bank, international bank numbers, uh, where they show uh, that uh, when you have, for example, 10% uh, plus of uh, uh, connectivity, it will impact uh, something like 0.7% in the GDP, uh, and, uh, et cetera. So we do not have uh, reports specifying in detail what we expect but of course um, uh, uh, we know that uh, the society uh, will be uh, the uh, we receive all the benefits of connectivity so uh, we are let's say in the moment more in the concept that what we do will impact uh, in a positive way all the society but we do not have an end uh, final report showing uh, what has changed uh, specifying in numbers. Okay, uh, any other question that we might have, I'm going to, I'll have to send to Agustinio because we are 10 minutes over our time. Uh, well, uh, first, thank you Agustinio for your collaboration today and this amazing presentation that you have provided to each one of us today.